Hey, what's up guys? So I know that title is kind of funny, but it's true. Actually updating the Arduino IDE broke some of my code. Uh, and this took me a long time to figure out. Uh, but I'm going to get into the nuts and bolts of all of this and actually show you two Arduinos here on the bench running exactly the same code. Everything is exactly the same except I loaded it with two different versions of the IDE. So we're going to get into that, but first, just for those of you that want the quick summary and want to bail on this video, let me just quickly explain to you what happened. So a while back on version 1.67, I wrote some code for the WS2812B addressable RGB LED. And I did a whole series of videos on this and the code is really cool. It's super lightweight, fast. Uh, you could just drop it right in, no libraries or anything like that needed. Uh, and it works perfectly. Well, until recently, I revisited some of that and brought that same code over into a new project in version 1.8 something, which is what, where we're at today. And uh, the LEDs wouldn't work at all. In fact, they just flicker and go nuts. And I had a big panel of LEDs actually, and it was, it was uh, hitting the current limit of the power supply. So it was chaos. I then just reverted back to Arduino version 1.67 and everything worked perfectly fine. So it took me a long time to figure out what was going on there. Um, but basically I have a for loop in that code that loops through all of the bytes um, in your total stream of bytes that you're sending out to the WS2812. And we'll get into that in a second too. But basically in that for loop, the first check, you know, as it's doing the for int i is equal to zero, less than the total bytes, i plus plus. That's where it was hanging up. In fact, it was hanging up longer in version 1.8 than it was in 1.67. So that's where I was stuck. And I was doing some you know, searching and trying to figure out how do you speed up a for loop? Well, it turns out that if you count down to zero versus up to some limit, it's faster. In fact, that's all I had to do. So instead of counting up from zero, I count down from the max number of bytes to zero. So for i is equal to the max number of bytes and i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus for my for loop. And it was faster and that fixed everything. So I actually have the logic analyzer out over here. We'll dig into it. I'll show you everything side by side and it might be kind of interesting to see this. So. Stick around if you want to see that. Otherwise, thanks for watching so far. So here we have the two exact Arduinos. These are both uh, Arduino Unos, brand new, running exactly the same code with the same four WS2812B LEDs hooked up. This one here was uploaded using version 1.67, this with 1.83. So clearly we've got a difference. It's supposed to only light up the first LED red. So the 1.67 looks fine. 1.83 is totally spazzing out. All of the LEDs are white and you probably can't see it on camera, but they're kind of flickering a little bit. Over here, we've got the code and this might look familiar to you. It's the same exact code that I did the video on, super lightweight. You can see down here, only 3% of the program storage, 1% of the dynamic memory. We've got four LEDs, so we've got that up there, uh, three bytes per each LED, so red, green, blue. So that gives us 12 bytes total in our um, byte stream, basically what we'll call it. Okay, so all of this is pretty much the same. We've got this function down here that updates the LEDs, pretty straightforward. And here is that for loop I was talking about. So this is right now the way it was in that video and it counts up from zero to the bit stream. And the bit stream is that value, number of LEDs times three. So it actually multiplies it down here as well. So um, now let me hook up the logic analyzer to the 1.67 first and we'll see what's going on. And by the way, all we're doing here in the loop is just updating the first LED, making it red, and just looping through constantly updating this. And uh, by the way, too, I have some ideas as to what's going on here. I wasn't able to prove any of them though, um, but I'm thinking that this might be some kind of compiler optimization. So in the 1.67, for some reason, it optimized this for loop. 
Um, it may have uh, either optimized this or maybe even some of the bitwise or logical uh, math that was going on down here. Uh, I have no idea, and we'll get to that in a second once I hook the logic analyzer up because you'll see exactly what's going on here. So let me do that real quick. All right, so now I've got the Salie hooked up. We're only gonna look at one channel, and that is the um, the actual signal pin out to the WS2812. Let's go ahead and hit start on that. Just gonna sample a quick two seconds of it. I'm gonna zoom out and catch it right at the beginning here. There we go. Okay, so right here is where the stream starts, and we should see, because we're updating the first LED, uh, let me pull up the data sheet real quick for the 2812. So you can see here that we first update the green byte, then red, then blue. So since there is no green in that first LED, these should all be zeros. The red should all be high and then all zeros again. And let's see if I remember this. So a zero code has a very specific time for the high and low parts there. So you see there the... T0 high should be 0.35 microseconds high, and then T0 low should be 0.9 microseconds. So if we go back over here, I already know that we were, were off a little bit there, but we're at 0.442 microseconds. So remember that, 0.442 microseconds for the zero off, or zero on time, okay? And then the off time looks pretty good. That's at 0.87 microseconds. So that's a little longer than the 0.35. Um, but we do have, I think we've got a little bit of leeway in there. Yeah, plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. So we're still okay. Uh, it's not great, but it works. And as you can see, it works. And I've, I've uh, with this same code on version 1.67, I've, I was able to control I think up to five or 600 of these LEDs without any issues at all. So I know that's good to go. Now let's probe. Um, oh, by the way, let me jump over here real quick. So just to show you the red there. So you can clearly see that the eight bits there for the first green byte look totally fine. They're all exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the red obviously look a little longer. So that we have the on time of 0.81 and then off time is, is about 0.5. So one code there, 0.9. So yeah, that looks pretty good. The low time, 0.35. So our, our low time is about 0.5, but again, it works fine. So uh, we'll continue on. Let me um, now hook up to the 1.83 board. Okay, so I ran the scan again, and here we are right at the beginning, and you can see right away the problem. So before that first bit was a 0.44 microseconds. Now it's 0.504, so it's longer, and that no doubt is what's causing the issue here. And it looks pretty much the same otherwise. It's just that first bit, for some reason, is coming in a little bit longer, and that's what's violating the timing for the uh, WS2812. But interestingly though, after that, it does correct itself back down uh, to 0.4 microseconds. So it's only that very first bit that's different. And that first bit right there, and I can show you in the loop, actually, let me go back to that. It's, so it loops through, and this would be a single byte right here in the for loop. And then it comes back around right here, but that's not really useful because that would be an on um, bit right there because then we have the eight bits there for the red and then looping back around. Now we're at the blue. And again, we have that first bit coming in high at 0.504. So that would be in this for loop, it goes through and it immediately drives the port pin high and that's the way this works. It drives it high and then it basically just changes the timing of which it turns it off. So right here, if, if it was supposed to be off or a low bit, it, it checks it against what the value is in the stream right here. So it first strips everything else away and it's only looking at that bit. And then it does a logical and with a one there 
and then ORs that against the existing port. So you might want to go back, and I've got a little description right here and, and an example of what that does. But this, if that bit was supposed to be a zero or low, it drives that pin low right here. So I'm thinking this is where the problem is. It's somewhere in this math. So this is could be where that compiler optimization is uh, messing things up somewhere in you know the way it's doing these bitwise ands or logical ands, uh, maybe even the or here. So I'm not really sure, but again, what fixes everything here is if I count instead of from zero up, if I just simply change this, and I'll just do it right now, start at the bitstream minus one, and then count i is greater than or equal to zero, get rid of that, and then minus minus, and then I'm just going to upload this code, so nothing changes. Of course, now everything's in reverse. So now my first LED is at the end, but really when you're dealing with these sort of LEDs and stuff, it doesn't really matter where your starting point is. And if it does matter, you can easily correct that just before you get into driving the LEDs, just reverse the whole uh, array there. So no big deal, but uh, for me, that's perfectly fine. I just have to remember that I'm counting at the end of this strip is my starting point. So anyway, that is kind of interesting. And look, it, it fixes it. In fact, let's go over and run another scan. So remember, the first bit was always counting at 0.5 microseconds. That was its on time. And now I'm going to run this again. And I'll zoom out till I find a fresh one here. Okay, right there. And there you have it, 0.442 microseconds. And now everything is on track and the on times are pretty much consistent there. So what, yeah, kind of a crazy thing. Um, you could call it a fail, but also I think that's kind of interesting that for loops run faster if you count down instead of up. And I was reading somewhere that it's easier for it to basically check the counter variable i there against zero versus some other integer value, right? So uh, anyway, hopefully that helps. I, maybe you found that interesting, maybe not. Uh, either way, thanks for watching.